how the creation or the true Vajnoon of the Lord becomes. You know, he is just amazed by the beauty of the Lord. And you would find these reflections in many of the awliya. Like, uh, I remember having the opportunity to meet or see Allama Tabatabai, but I Qara'i, the one who translated the Quli Qara'i, the Quran, he was mentioning to me once that when we used to visit Allama Tabatabai, it was as if Allama was somewhere else. And if you look some of his YouTube video, you realize that. Aghai Hassan Zadi Amili, one of the students of Tabatabai, Allama Tabatabai, he also mentions this, that the Allama was the Mizda, was the referent of the Hadith of Amir al which says that the Lord asked the angel, find my slave. They look at, at the earth, they couldn't find it. They look at the heaven, they couldn't find it. They look at amongst the angels, they couldn't find it. But finally they find it, the Lord, the, 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 the Abd, amazed or gazing at the throne of the Lord. He is just focused towards the Lord. So Allama had that sort of appearance apparently on YouTube as well, that he would answer, he would speak, he would, whatever you will ask him, but he will be you know, somewhere else. You could tell that this man is somewhere else. And usually people of this caliber, you could tell that when you visit them and you sit with them. You know, you could tell that you know, they are with us, but they are somewhere else. For Jawa the Amali, you know, those who are left some of the students who are there now. So they are witnessing and they are continuously you know, in a state where they are downloading, where they are seeing their Lord on different levels, their Jalal and Jamal and their Kamalat. And their certainty is increasing. Hazrat Ibrahim, let me give you a story for our youngsters here. Now, what type of ibadat is this? This ibadat of theirs is with that certainty and yaqeen. Right? You know, do I worship, do you worship a Lord <coughs> that you don't see? That do you worship a Lord that you see? I mean, when we say that, do I worship? Wow unto you. How can I worship a Lord that I don't see? That's yaqeen, right? That's certainty. They have reached to that certainty. Hazrat Ibrahim was returning back. The famous story of, of the birds. So he says that, you know, I would like to see, the words clearly says, I would like to see how you raise the dead. Because it's a very fascinating reality. It's hard to comprehend it and understand that God will raise everybody on the day of judgment. You know, you have, and it's one of the core beliefs of ours, Qiyamah. You have to believe in, you know, to be a Muslim, to be believing in Quran, you have to believe in Allah, Tawheed, Adil, Nabuwat, Muhammad, Qiyamah. You have to believe in Qiyamah, in the Day of Judgment. So as the Ibrahim says, I would like to see how you raise them on the Day of Judgment. It's like you cannot comprehend. But as the Ibrahim was one of those sincere, you know, worshippers of the Lord, where God says, okay, I'll show you. So for us as well, if we sincerely worship, God starts showing us things. Maybe in dreams, maybe in reality, maybe inspiration that we will have. Right? So God says, well, Ibrahim, okay, take four birds and slaughter them and mix them up and put them on different you know, parts of the mountain and come and ask them to come to you. They will come to you. That's how I will raise them. Now here. Imam Sadiq explains this in a more detail. Now obviously, the Ahl Bayt are those who are aware of the secrets of the Qur'an. Because Qur'an have bath, have 70 secrets to the Qur'an, to really understand. And the Qur'an clearly says that, فَسَأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ You know, ask those who are the Ahl Dhikr. So here Imam says that, do you know what these four birds were? that Imam Hazrat Ibrahim was asked to catch and slaughter them and kill them so that he could see, so that he could witness the Day of Judgment, how it takes place. So Imam says that it was a crow bird, it was a peacock, it was a rooster, and it was a pigeon. 
Oh, Ibrahim, take these four birds. The Quran doesn't talk here. The Quran talks about four birds, but it doesn't. But Imam explains it in more detail. So, why a crow, Imam Sadiq Ali Salam? This hadith apparently comes from Abu Basir. Abu Basir is one of the com Imam Sadiq have many companions, and he had trained every sort of group of students in every, in different field. Isham ibn Hakam in the field of theology. Zurara in the field of jurisprudence and law. Abu Basir in the field of mysticism. So Abu Basir's rivayat or traditions or narrations that we have, they are very sort of mystical. You know, and he was of that sort of substance he himself. He became blind and uh, and, uh, and also you have heard this hadith that Imam asked him to look through the Two fingers, there were a lot of hajis, but they were animals, and you know, I'm just reminding you, I don't want to get into that. Now, this hadith, crow, you say, Abu Basir, why? Because crow is a bird which have long hopes. That's why the crow bury the walnuts in the ground. O Ibrahim, cut your long hopes, rely on God. Oh, inshallah, we'll, inshallah, we'll just go get to say inshallah. Oh, we have long hopes, you know. We'll do this, we'll do that, we'll do that. Right? As if we're going to live. Then number two, oh, Abu Basi, oh, uh, oh, Abu Basi, the meaning of pigeon is that pigeon is a greedy bird. It kind of chews up the food and stores it in the neck. You know, the stomach is this little, but if you look at pigeon's neck, it's quite big. Because it stores the food there. Oh, Ibrahim, cut your greed if you want to see Qiyam. Don't be greedy. Do not have long hopes. Oh, Ibrahim, do not be arrogant. Peacock is a very proud and arrogant bird. If you want to see Qiyam, step on your arrogance. Cut your arrogance, your soul. Step on it. Oh, Ibrahim, Rooster, cut your shahwat. Rooster is a very, you know, shahwat. It has a lot of sort of energy. It has a lot of shahwat, a lot of lust. Rooster, cut that. So you will see Qiyam. So it's a very symbolic revival. And in the eye also pointing out to that if a soul, if a nafs, kills his greed, that's why we have many rivayat and hadith saying that do not be greedy. Kills the long hope. You know, to rely on God, right? Now, obviously, there's a lot of things that practicality here, long hopes, okay, you rely on God, you plan, that is all good. But there are some people who just hope that they're going to live forever. You know, there was a Khalifa who announced that, is there anyone who have heard the Prophet himself to, for a revival, for a tradition? So they brought a very fragile old man in a, in a, in a carpet. And then he said, I remember two hadiths. Uh, something of this accord, he recited one hadith, uh, and uh, the next one he forgot, but for one hadith he was given such and such reward, and uh, before leaving he says that, are you going to have some similar type of competition next year as well, you know, so he's, he's like, he's brought in carpet, he's like, you know, you know if, you, if you blow on him he will fly, he will die, kind of thing, right, who have heard the Prophet after hundreds of years, you know, some Khalifa, so I'm trying long hope, kill that. Arrogance, you know, one is proud. Self-righteousness, unfortunately, we tend to see, see these disease among the Muslims, among the Shias of the, who have relied. Oh, I think it's mine. We are the inheritors of the Jannah. Oh, those are kafir. They don't go in Jannah. They go in Jannah. You know, it's me, it's mine. Self-righteousness that we think. Then finally is the uh, pigeon is the uh, is the rooster. So inshallah, I think we'll continue on this. There's a bit more of discussion in regards to the mukhlasin and and how they come about uh, seeing their Lord and what does it really mean. Uh, inshallah, in our next sessions, and we'll open up the floor for question and answers. With the Um, so we'll do question and answer. Um, shall we start? Who would like to get us started? Uh, 
of a beautiful talk, and it's got a lot of depth. But I'm thinking that at this age now, if I haven't reached there where you are telling us to reach, how, this is my problem all the time that I teach at the madrasa. How can we do it that our children from this age start thinking in these sort of terms, where we are not on uh, ritualistic, but more towards uh, achieving the spirit that you are talking about? Excellent point, Mashallah, very good. Uh, as you said that you haven't reached, but the hikmat and the question that you have asked itself uh, points out to that, Mashallah, you have, you know, have an insight, Mashallah, may Allah SWT protect you. Uh, I think we need to look into the, the curriculum, the practicality. We need to introduce a lot of poetry in our, in our schools. Uh, because it has that sort of poetry in the sense that it has that uh, element of latafat. You know, it makes the the soul kind of subtle and and have that uh, the soul is prepared for for being easily molded, so to speak. You know, like children, and that's why we tend to see that if you look at uh, the, the the tradition, the, the, the traditional system of teaching. Poetry, art, you know, you know, handwriting, you know, this sort of calligraphy. And these were part of the of the te of the curriculum for all of these scholars who turned into Rumi, who turned into Hafez, who turned into these great scholars. You know, who, who really kind of looked into these uh, unique uh, divine Tawhidi principles, who were able to really bring that out, that Tawhid from the Quran, obviously. You know, uh, you know, Sadra and all. So we have to really kind of uh, teach our children that you know, Quran and, and, and probably that might help. And, and at the same time, uh, educate them and you know, teach them, give them something that is a bit higher. These discussions that we are talking about, Tawhi, Tawhi Afal, Tawhi Azad, all of these things are needed. Although the, they might not really grasp completely, but it should fall on their ears. You know, uh, it's a nice story of uh, Shah Abadi, who was the teacher of Imam Khomeini in Irfan. Few businessmen came from Tehran to ask Shah Abadi a question. So people who are into business, they are obviously far away from the spiritual aspect like Irfan and all that. You know. So Shah Abadi answered them in a very mystical way, in a very sort of talked about mystical principles. After they left, Imam Khomeini criticized in a way, saying that these words for these people, right? Hamid Algar in the translation of uh, Tafsir of Surah Hamd of Imam Khomeini brings this incident, because Imam Khomeini mentions this in his last lecture uh, of Tafsir. So Shah Abadi says that let these kufriyat, he says, let this sort of, because Irfan was known as Kufr, because they killed Hallaj, right? Obviously, they don't really comprehend and understand these, you know, these uh, mullahs, and, you know, muftis, so on. So, Shah Bani says, let these Kufriyat fall on these deaf ears as well. Perhaps these deaf ears might get some attracted towards, oh, what a fascinating concept, and they might be attracted towards. Because we are too much preoccupied with our you know, you know, halal and haram, and we are like just focused, but we are not really focusing on the spirit, you know, on that essence of all of these halal and haram, which is this tawheed. Yeah. Um, I think we're going to cut off the questions there, only because I want to give everyone a chance to do wudu before we start praying. Um, so we're going to cut off right now. Uh, there's about less than 10 minutes to do wuzu before namaz. Uh, so the washrooms are out those double doors to the right if you need to use them. And then we'll, inshallah, do namaz after. What you, I'm sorry, sister, just uh, what you could do that if you have any questions, you can email or you can write it. Inshallah, we'll start our session day after tomorrow with the questions, inshallah. That's Thank you. Right. Thank you. And we encourage you to come on Tuesday. Inshallah. <laughs> اللهم انقرأ الفاتحة لأرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات especially 
the Marfumin of the organizers and the Marfumin of the contributors uh, to this organization, to these iftar, to these programs, and the Marfumin of the, all the brothers and sisters who are present here with the Allah.